Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Amish Rebel Podcast. We're grateful that you're tuning in to today's episode. We're going to talk about uh, emotional healing and how do the Amish deal with death. And uh, we're we're inspired to take make this conversation or have this conversation because I think it's it's one that I've wanted to have for a while, but it's also one that's been uh, that's something that I've been dealing with here recently. As some of you guys know, in the last video that I made last week, uh, uh, dealing with a close friend, uh, actually my best friend here in Texas, passing away. And so I'll also give you a little bit of an update at the end of the video on that. So appreciate you guys tuning in today. And uh, Lavina is going to have this conversation with me. She's here on the podcast today. And we're going to just talk about how do the Amish deal with death? What happens when someone dies in the Amish community? How do they process it emotionally? What are their funeral services like? And hopefully we'll answer some of the questions that you guys have along those lines, or maybe you haven't thought about it. And hopefully you can learn something from this conversation. So uh, let's jump right into it. You know, I just want to ask you the question, Lavana. Like, based on your experience with uh, the Amish funeral services, how do they, like, how do they put those services together? When somebody dies, like, how fast does the service happen, and how do they put those services together? Um, it takes three days. Like, the f service is exactly three days after the person died, and it's always at the house that the person lived in or died at unless you know the house burned down or something but it's always either at their house or a relatives close relatives house and the family doesn't do any work to get ready to help get ready like friends and neighbors and people like that will come and do all of the work to get ready be there three solid days and on the third day is when the services and they have a what they call a wake every night where they stay up until like well past midnight and sing like songs about mourning and grief and like li or going to heaven or whatever. And this, these are usually, the songs are usually sung by the youth groups. Like the married people will help too, but usually the youth groups that are church members will stay to help sing those. Okay. And... I don't know, I always, one time I was there when they started the wake, and I just saw it, you know, the songs they sing, and the way they sing it with no instruments and stuff, it's, it kind of sounds sad, it sounds like a wailing, you know, how they sing, like, I could sing something for you if you'd want me to, but it sounds like, I mean, they sound nice, yes, but they bring out a lot of emotion, like sadness and stuff like that, if you're not used to it. Yeah. And they sing those like at the wake every night before the funeral, and then the day of the funeral, they'll like preach, go bury the person, and then they'll also sing a song. They'll eat like they feed everybody twice that day for lunch and for supper. So, but the family that's dealing with the person that died, they don't do nothing. No, they I don't. Mean, they do are waited anyone, on like they're waited on hand and foot. Yeah, right? I yeah. Mean, they, they, people come to their house. Oh, oh, and everybody wears black. Well, the men wear blue shirts. All the women wear solid black, except the married women wear white caps. Okay, but the the women that are not within the church, they wear black caps, or does yeah. everybody? Okay. Yeah. So. Or the women that aren't married. So I know, like, the family, the immediate family, so let's say my my parent or my dad which he did pass away two years but our situation was slightly different because there's yeah. so many non-amish in the mix of it but typically um when a parent passes away the immediate family like all the all the kids uh even well i don't know about the grandkids but i know all the kids would yeah, the be taken, ca would be taken care of, of yeah. like uh, everybody would come together within the community and they would it's, do all the chores. Uh, so if you have cows that you're milking, mm -hmm. they milk all the cows. They feed all all yeah. the animals. They take care of everything. They from cook food for all the hundreds of people that show up to. Like they have viewings. Like 
what, three or four times a day where the people just like walk through to look at the person or two or oh, three times yeah. a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. Yep, it's... And every, like, people show up at all times all during those days and there's always food there at lunch and supper time if someone wants food. Yeah. And while they're there, like, the people that are there that come from out of state and stuff, they're just there, like, not doing anything except talking with each other, talking to the family. Like, that is all they do. Like, they don't have their phones and stuff to go on. (laughs) They just literally sit there and talk to each other for a whole day. Yeah, it's it's quite different. I remember the first time that I was really a part of a of a a funeral service that was outside of the Amish community and it was not it was not a funeral service like I was used to within the Amish community. And there was like celebration of life. I know like uh Christians including myself, like I'm I'm a Christian and so the way that Christians celebrate a lot of times is it's a celebration of life because they believe that that person has gone to be with the Lord, has gone off to to be in heaven. Maybe his physical body died here on earth, but his spirit went to, to go to heaven. And so there's a celebration there. And of course, there's mourning, there's sadness, but but there's also laughter, there's joy. And we never experienced that in the Amish community because there's, like, when you have someone that died, the body is put in in the home in which the person lived, and then it's put in the bedroom of the home. Yeah, they clean and, out the bedroom. They, that's all that's in there. Yeah, they clean out the what we would consider the master bedroom, and they would put the body in there for a viewing. It's The body's in there in a casket, and it stays in there for for all the viewings and so as soon as the moment you step into that house everything goes quiet mm-hmm. nobody really talks i mean they whisper back and forth yeah, but it's do. really quiet it's really depressing and there's just kind of that uh spirit or that atmosphere created within yeah. that home and everything is really sad now if you step outside and you kind of get away from the home then people start to talk more and interact more yeah. but but that's usually that was my experience growing up as a kid and then and then you know experiencing funeral service outside of that I'm like the first time I remember seeing people happy or not necessarily happy of course sad missing the person mm-hmm. that passed but like, hey, this is also a celebration that yeah. they're in heaven. I just thought, like, that's the strangest thing ever. Yep, you know? and another thing that I just remembered that they do when there's, like, a funeral they're getting ready for it is if the people come there with a the bogey, they don't drive fast. Like, their horse mm, yep. trots all maintained, like, walks, like, classily. I don't know, it's classic, but whatever, like, slow, like, nothing is rushed, like, everything is slow, and it's the same way when you go to, like, when you go to the funeral, and then after the service, when they go bury them, like, a funeral procession almost, they load, like, the casket on the back and go to the cemetery, and and then other people go along to watch them bury them, and they use their bookies, and every horse, like, the bucky horses are supposed to walk, like, they're not supposed to run at all. And yeah. the bulky, like the open bulky with the casket in it, is always leading the procession. Yeah, that'd be that'd be considered a graveside service, which is uh, Amish always have a grave graveside yeah, service. They have it's, like a a ceremony at the house for a couple of hours, and then they go to the gravesite, and while they're at the gravesite burying the person, they also sing songs. Mm, yeah. So, yep. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I don't know. Were you ever at it, at the gravesite when they were singing? Like, Well, you were at Grandma yeah, Grandpa, gra- or grandmas Grandpa's. And, or Grandpa's, grandpas. and then also... I it's was like, at, it sounds so sad. You're just out in the wide open, and they're singing this sad song. Yeah. Like, and then they don't cry. Like, they... They literally don't cry. Yeah, that's which it. is another thing. Like it's a, sh- it's like it's considered shameful to be caught, or not shameful, but 
you don't want to be caught crying. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be seen with tears. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they really, they really think, I, I mean, the belief is that, that it is, is weakness. And, and I think that's even in the kind of more the mindset of the older generation uh, is if you, you know, if you cry, it's considered weakness. And I personally don't believe that. I think we have, you know, we should tap into those emotions. I think it's good. Um, I've done plenty of that in the last few weeks just because of losing my friend. And I think it's, it's healthy to tap into those emotions at the right time. Obviously not being out of control. Uh, sometimes it feels out of control, but um, in, in really sad times. But I think the Amish, they definitely, they don't ever want to show that to anybody. And I just remember like my grandpa passing away <clears throat> and, you know, even some, even some people within the community, you'd never show that emotion. I mean, it was just stone cold. Everybody's stone cold. And that's why if you go to an Amish funeral and you're like, what's wrong with these people? They just, they, especially the men, they will not, they will not shed a tear. You, I mean, hardly ever, I don't remember ever seeing anybody shed a tear other than maybe a woman or two, um, Showing that yeah. emotion during the, the funeral. Only, the only Amish adult I've ever seen shed tears was my mom. Literally. Like and it was when my <laughs> older brother left the Amish. Wow. That was the only time I saw her ever shed tears. Yeah. And it is probably almost the only time mom and dad would shed tears. I never saw dad cry. I never saw dad shed a tear in his life. Yeah. Pretty sure he probably did when we, when we left the Amish. And when they do leave the Amish, like when someone leaves the Amish, it's very much treated like they died. Everybody wears black. People come visit them. It's all somber and quiet. Same way it is with a funeral. And they just talk in low voices. And Yeah. Yeah, it's a very sad time. The same it is when you lose a friend or you lose a fam family member even. Uh, from the outside world, from a Christian perspective, it's a very sad time, but they don't allow any kind of happy and joyful times mm -hmm. inside that. Like, they're very, very sheltered and then they to... And they also don't give hugs, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just walking around greeting people. You're yeah, just... you just have, like, yeah. this poker face of... I can't show any emotions right now, but I'm not happy. But yeah. <laughs> and you're most of the time. And you never say sorry someone died. Like if someone passed away, you never say sorry. Yeah. Like they, that is just unheard of to say sorry if someone passes away. Yeah. It's more, it's more, they take the approach that it was his time or it her time. To be. It was meant to be. And Although that's, I mean, I feel like that's true. Everybody has their time when they, when they pass away. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes it's premature and mm -hmm. uh, they definitely don't talk about that. And they don't, yeah, they like a, like a man, like today I'm wearing a hat and you're probably wearing, wondering why am I wearing this hat? This is actually the hat that I uh, grew up wearing. I wore this hat until the time that I left. I kept, I kept this hat and it's got my initials on the inside of it. And I thought today I'm going to wear it because I, I started, um, I cut my hair like an Amish haircut and I just want to show people what it was really like as a kid. I mean, I feel I feel conflicted wearing hair like this because I, I never liked it as a kid. But I'm completely doing it as entertainment show, and you guys hopefully you get to get a little better picture of the way it was for me growing up. So a lot of people have commented about my hair, where you know where the hair where the hair come from, why am I doing that? And <laughs> I'm simply doing it. We're getting a little off topic here, but I'm simply doing this just to show you guys what it was like. Wearing the hat, the Amish men, when somebody dies, they really t tip the hat forward. A lot of times they they uh, walk around with their head down, at like a like a shameful type of uh, 
approach to greeting someone, shaking their hand. And it's really just, they try to make it, even their body language is as sad as possibly mm-hmm. could be. And uh, and those are called uh, wool hats. Yeah, they this, have this felt, is a, But they're called a wool hat. And then they also have straw hats for the summer when, yeah. when it's warm. Because those things are pretty thick and warm. Yeah, so the... I guess you would see, yeah, like you said, you would see them wearing the black hat most of the time in the winter time mm-hmm. or when it's cooler out, and uh, and it's it's one type of hat. This one has a little shorter brim because it's it's a youth hat. Yeah. But once you're married, you get a little wider brim. Mm-hmm. And uh, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the conversation today. I I also wanted to just give you an update on Joshua Brandis, and I want to. I want to just uh, speak a little bit to who he was. And first of all, I want to thank you guys for whoever um, donated. We put a GoFundMe together for for his wife and their three boys. And their oldest son is 16. And then they have a 13-year-old and a, a, um, a an 8-year-old. And so for those of you that hadn't been following or hadn't seen the video should give you a quick update uh, a really my best friend here in Texas uh, passed away in a motorcycle accident here a few weeks ago as of the recording of this video and it was completely unexpected and so we put a GoFundMe together to help his family and you won't hear me talk a whole lot about you know helping out or giving to certain projects but I really felt the need to do this and ask you guys for your help. And some of you have have uh, donated to that, and we really appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. I know we can't get back to everybody and all the comments that you guys have left across all the platforms, and we just greatly appreciate. And there's also a PayPal uh, account out there that the fire department had put together. I shared that across all the platforms and. I'm sure some of you have um, donated to that as well. And we really appreciate that. I know that his wife and the boys are going to greatly appreciate it. And and we'll definitely uh, pass any messages on along to them that you guys leave. And uh, I just wanted to update you on that. We are going to continue to leave the GoFundMe up because there's... We have a goal for, I think it was 25000 that we put together. It goes towards projects that we're, that we're doing at the house for her, kind of taking care of, making sure everything's taken care of, and then also whatever is left over, just give to them as a gift, uh, as just so showing support and helping them be more stable as a family moving forward. And so Josh was, uh, he was a... He was a he was a pillar in the community. I mean, he he was a police officer. Uh, he was also a firefighter at the same time. He was a full time firefighter and a police officer on the side. And he worked with the school. He was security at the school, and he just did a lot in the community. He he led um, a group at church where we, he put together a men's breakfast, and he was doing that. He. He was teaching the youth at church, and uh, so he was filling a lot of roles, and it, it's, it's definitely left a big hole in the community, uh, but we must continue to move forward from this, and we'll do everything that we can to help the family out and help them get through this difficult time. So I also appreciate the comments that you guys left for me. Uh, thank you for that, and I think... That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, unless you had something else that you wanted to add or that you want to share with the audience. Don't think so. Um, also, I just thank you for putting that GoFundMe together. Oh, Levina yeah. put that yeah. together and and uh, appreciate your support on that. But uh, that being said, uh, we are going to get back uh, with another video uh, next week. And we hope that you tune in for that. Um, we just really appreciate all your support. We've had been having uh, 
a lot of fun putting these videos together. Recently, it's not been as much fun because of everything that's going on, <laughs> but nevertheless, we, we appreciate uh, you guys listening and your support, and uh, we will see you in the next video.